CPTSD typically happens when it's a recurring trauma. This could be abuse from your parents, whether it's verbal, physical, emotional, and this can show up later in life as an adult as social anxiety. Imagine you're going to a networking event. First thing you notice that between you and the first group cluster or people that you see is about a one minute walk away. As a matter of fact, this auditorium is so huge. There's way more space than there are people. So you walk towards the first two people that you see that is the closest and they're having a ball. Okay, they're laughing, they're calling each other out. They, they don't even notice you coming and it takes you a whole minute just to walk towards them. So you're walking towards them, you're walking towards them, wondering to yourself, what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? Am I gonna sound stupid? And then finally you get to them. They both pause and stop and look at you at the same time and there's dead silence. How do you feel in this moment? Because if you felt any type of physiological symptoms, such as your heart beating fast, your breath breathing faster, or you have this tingly feeling, whether it's from your stomach, your chest, or maybe even your throat closing in, if it was anything on that scale, it's probably social anxiety or even anxiety in general. On a scale of one to 10, how familiar does this feel? If you answered lower than a four, this video is probably not for you. But if you answered five and above, then stick around because in this video, I'm gonna tell you where that comes from, what it is, and what to do about it. What is actually happening? What is happening is anxiety is being triggered in these high stakes social situations. Typically when I say high stakes social situations, it means that it's somebody of higher authority than you, typically a boss or somebody of high significance, maybe an interviewer and you're the interviewee, or even a potential friend, but you feel somehow that you're unworthy of this friendship. Anxiety in general has three major components, the physiological where you feel it, your heart is beating, your throat is closing up, maybe you're sweating. There's something physiologically happening and you notice it. The cognitive component, that's what you're thinking. Your thoughts, those negative things you might say about yourself when you're in these situations like, oh, I sound dumb, oh, they probably don't care, oh, they find me boring. There's these negative thoughts about yourself that's perpetuating these feelings in yourself. So it's the thoughts that go through your head. And then there's the behavioral components. I talk about that a lot on this channel, whether it's the stuttering or slurring, or you get stuck on words and your verbal fluency becomes a lot lower than it normally is when you're in a more relaxed state. Right? So there are things that behaviorally happens. That's what I mostly talk about in my Verbal Power Academy course, for example, is the behavioral because the behavioral is something you can change right away. You can adjust yourself. If you're contracted, you can easily expand yourself. It's very quick hack to do, but you have to address all three components in order to get rid of that social anxiety. So it's all the other stuff, which is important <laughs> that I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients with. That being said, you're in luck because you watching this video, you can introspect and implement these things in your life. This social anxiety is not how we were meant to function as human beings because we are social animals. It wouldn't make sense that we were born with social anxiety. That literally does not evolutionarily make any sense. So that means something happened at some point in your life to make you feel anxiety in social situations. Typically not always, but typically at least what I see with my clients is that something happened in their childhood. Typically if it was something in our formative years, it's something that happened repetitively. And so you can form some sort of CPTSD. Just as a quick reference, PTSD, usually it's one specific moment that was extremely traumatizing. CPTSD typically happens when it's a recurring trauma. This could be abuse from your parents, whether it's verbal, physical, emotional, or there's neglect happening where they didn't really pay attention to you or they didn't validate to you. And this can show up later in life as an adult as social anxiety. Maybe as an adult, you can look back and say, oh, you know what? 
my mom was verbally abusive, my dad was verbally abusive, uh, maybe your parents were narcissistic or even covert narcissistic, or maybe they overtly relied upon you and there was codependency issues. This is an example, child neglect or child abuse, even on a minor level, can look something like you being harsh or dismissive of other people's feelings because your feelings weren't heard or you were treated unfairly in some type of way. There's multiple different dynamics that can happen that can result in you not developing a proper social protocol that maybe other people, your peers, have developed. This can obviously become a problem because as your social skills suffered, your relationships suffered as well. And so you felt more comfortable in the relationship that you know, which typically wasn't the most healthy relationships. And now most of your formative years were sprinkled with these unhealthy social interactions. If you're still watching this video, then a part of you relates to this and a part of you understands where this is coming from. Once you know where it's from and how it's changed you do not dwell on that because there is a brighter future and that future is you you being the confident best amazing social person and connecting and building strong deep relationships with anybody and everybody that you want to at any given moment so the question is how do we do that on a practical level the first step is to look at people in the eyes this can be one of the most scariest yet physically, technically, the easiest thing to do. I was recently just talking to a client about this and it was the realization of looking at somebody in the eyes is overwhelming because it's showing your vulnerability. It's saying that, hey, now that I'm looking at you and now that our attention is possibly matched, even if they are looking away, eventually they'll probably look at you and we make eye contact. Now we are open to infinite amount of possibilities of where this can go. So there's a sense of vulnerability that needs to happen there. And if you're in the state of fear, anxiety, what can happen to me? What will they think of me? There can be all these negative thoughts that go through you and it leaves you vulnerable in that sense. This is scary and it's okay that it's scary because if you have been beaten down by life, by people who are supposed to love and care for you, why would you look up? and try to fight that. It takes courage. It takes this drive that is in you. Maybe you forgot, but you know it's in you, that fire that's in you to actually look up and say, hey, I'm here. Hey, this is me, right? So the eye contact. Don't worry, I'm not gonna have you go out there just staring at people in the faces. We're gonna do this in a graduated systematic exposure method. And what that means is to first Look at people in the eye who is a cashier at the grocery store or really anybody in customer service when you go and pay for things. Now that might be hard if you don't go out very much, but when you do, make sure you look at that person in the eyes. The reason why I want you to start there in customer service because it's low risk. People in customer service are generally speaking going to be kind to you. They're going to be receptive to you because it is their job to do so. It doesn't mean you stare them down by the way. Look away every four to seven seconds because that's what we do naturally as human beings. So look away, look back or look down, look up back, right? Then you can graduate eye contact into people that simply walks by you. So maybe you're walking towards a store and you look at other people as they leave a building and you enter a building this is something very scary because oftentimes what do we do we look down at our phone or we look away as if we're trying to say i don't even notice you <laughs> while we walk in the building even though peripherally you obviously know that they're there that's why you're avoiding them right <laughs> and if you're in the western world all you need to do is go little head nod it's just saying hi without saying hi and if they don't do a head nod or say hi back, it doesn't matter. Again, it's a lower risk, but it is a step above customer service because they could technically reject you in a way that they can technically just ignore you. And they can technically not even look up because maybe they have social anxiety too. And then level three for me is going up to a stranger, having and initiating a conversation with them by looking them in the eyes first. This could be at a networking event. This could be you walking by on the streets. It could be you in the grocery store line trying to talk about what you got and how excited you are about these new lettuce vegetables you got, right? It doesn't matter what it is. Making an excuse 
to make eye contact with somebody and maybe having a little bit of small conversation, which might be a whole nother topic in itself. But the point being that you want to slowly graduate your eye contact level to a low risk to a high risk social interaction. Another quick tip is assuming a relaxed state. So a relaxed state looks like somebody who's not tense, their shoulders are down, their neck is long, their posture is straight, and when they walk, they walk with poise and confidence. Just go into that relaxed state even when you're not feeling so relaxed. We want to inform our body, to inform our brain what to actually think and feel instead of the other way around. A final trick that I got from Simon Sinek is to interpret your nervousness, your anxiety, as actually you being super excited about this moment in time. To give you context, this derives from Olympians being asked over and over in interviews, are you nervous? And oftentimes they would say, no, actually I'm very excited. But both when you're really nervous or when you're really excited, your heart rate goes up. You start to sweat a little bit, you get a little bit antsy, right? A lot of the same thing happens when you're excited about something versus when you're nervous about something. So just change the story in your head when you're feeling that anxiety. I can't believe I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and so what what I typically have done is I would smile if I'm feeling nervous I would smile because then I'm telling myself actually I'm very excited about this I don't know why I'm so excited but I am super excited and now my social anxiety has turned to social excitement I can't wait until I connect with all these people right so now it's a different story in my head now my body language is different now how I speak to people is different so when maybe you have a thought in your head of oh my gosh I'm feeling nervous, oh my gosh, I don't wanna walk up to them. Instead of that, ask yourself, wait, why am I so excited? What, what is it about this situation that's making me so stoked, <laughs> right? And when you ask your brain these questions, your brain wants to answer. And then you think to yourself, oh, that's why I'm so excited. I really wanna make new connections. And it might sound silly, but you'd be surprised how an assumptive question really triggers a person even yourself asking yourself to think to themselves oh wait this is why because innately as humans we want to answer the question and so you're going to answer the question even if you don't want to it's it's just going to happen taking these opportunities that's before was withered away and now you're empowered and you can take it on because you are a different person you are more than you were yesterday and you're going to be even more tomorrow so that being said i'm lady tina leader i'm glad you stuck around till the end if you like this video please hit the subscribe button um, and also the like button because it helps me so until then, I will see you on the next video.